Shalom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're welcome to the show again. It's Chimizio Kongo on Let There Be Light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And today the Lord will resolve issues in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He's giving us a message in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A message that will provoke thought, thoughts in people in Jesus' name and teach and educate and impact in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're welcome again in Jesus' name. It's Let There Be Light with Chimizio Kongo in Jesus' name. So Father, we pray. We dedicate this to you to the Lord. Father, we welcome you to this show in Jesus' name. Lord, you are the incubator. Father, deliver the child you have incubated in the womb of your wisdom and knowledge. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in this show, give us speed, accuracy. Father, give us wisdom to deliver this message the way you planned it. Soundness of mind. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord God Almighty, convict sinners through this message and lord for generations to come let this message be a light that will shine through generations in the mighty name of jesus christ and king of glory we say thank you lord in yeshua's name we pray amen you see god is so good in the mighty name of jesus christ he's brought us through or when we started this year i i entered this year in a storm in a, a severe storm and i'm still here he's a faithful god in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if you are watching me, or maybe you're losing hope, that's not why we came here, but it's also why we came here. If you're losing hope, be encouraged. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's in 2018, this year, the Lord told us that we are entering the ark, and that we'll be in the ark. He said it's not taking us, it's not like Noah, Noah's ark. You see, in Noah's ark, there was a time when the Lord told them to come out of the ark, but this time around, God says we will stay in the ark. Even next year, he said we are still in the ark, but he has told us that next year, is greater the greater light in the mighty name of jesus christ he say he will show things he will do things that will marvel the world because when we entered this year he told us to to, to go and buy the amplified bible i never had it, i had a, or studied an amplified bible this year i studied it and he said we should buy it because he will amplify our voices and he did it in the mighty name of jesus christ so thank god in jesus name so we are still in the ark in the mighty name of jesus christ but we are moving into the greater light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May God be glorified. So today's message, the Lord has, has titled it, Our Gospel. Our Gospel. Listen, I discovered that the, the message of the gospel is um, a testimony or a testament of the, um, uh, of the testator's experiences or encounter with the Lord. The, the encounter that brought a change in his life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we'll go to the book of Romans 16.25 very quickly. Romans 16.25. I will read from the King James Version. It says, Now to him, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, the, the Apostle Paul wrote, according to my gospel, according to my encounter. What was his gospel? His gospel was his testament of how he received Christ, how he, how he persecuted the church, received Christ, I mean, he got into a storm and then received Christ and his life was changed and he became a, a vessel in the mighty hand of God. That's his gospel. He says, My gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept since secret since the world began. My gospel is my, my testimony, my positive change, the positive encounter that I've had in Christ. My experiences that as when I speak it to people, when I tell people of my story, how I met the Lord and things that have changed in my life, it will stir up that change in the name of Jesus Christ. God, it says, God establishes you in the faith through my gospel, through my testimony of Jesus Christ. That is my testimony of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of 2 Thessalonians 1.10. And I'm reading from the Amplified. 2 Thessalonians 1.10. Listen to what it says now. It says, when he comes, when the Lord comes to be glorified in his saints, he is coming to be glorified in his sense. He says, on that day, that is glorified through the changed lives. Listen to me. The gospel is not the gospel if it does not change lives. If it does not bring a change. If you have to continue the, the, your lifestyle before you got saved, you are not saved. He says, through, he will be glorified through changed lives of those who have accepted him as savior and have been set apart for his purpose and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony which is our gospel to you was believed because our testimony to you was believed now when i tell you my stories it is your choice whether you believe it or not 
But I'll be make sure that I'll tell you the truth. Just like the Apostle Paul, he was telling, most of the, uh, the, 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 the Gospels and Epistles that Paul wrote, you see that he was telling his story of his encounter with Christ, of his storms and challenges. That's his Gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, he says, of our Gospel, to you was believed and trusted and confirmed in our lives. When you believe the Gospel, it will be confirmed in you, in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Christ is glorified through changed lives. That is how he is glorified. The gospel is your evidence of new life. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.10 talks about new life. It can't be a new life and you continue in the old way. It is not possible. At the point of delivery, I say again, the gospel belongs to the delivered. The delivered. The one that has the testimony of Christ, how Christ saved him from what he used to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it's their experience. My gospel is my encounter that gave birth to my change. My encounter of the Lord Jesus Christ that gave birth to my change, my positive change, that even people around you, people that knew you or know you, can say, yes, this, this guy is changed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go, by the grace of God, to the book of Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 26 to 27. 26 to 27. He said, for if we go on willfully and deliberately sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice to atone for our sins. If we go on deliberately, intentionally, if, if, if there, 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 there are different categories of sins, we'll, we'll see, we'll find out from the Bible. If you premeditate it before you do it, it is not what Jesus Christ died for. He says, there remains no, there remains a, there, there no longer remains a sacrifice to atone for our sins. That is no further offering to anticipate, but a kind of awful and terrifying expectation of divine judgment. It says judgment is coming if you are living like that. It says, and the fury of a fire and burning wrath, which will consume the adversaries, those who put themselves in opposition. So now it's telling you that you are in opposition by so doing to God. And in verse 29, let's read from 29 to 31, it says, How much greater punishment, it causes greater punishment, what sort of people will receive? It says, to you, uh, what, uh, how much greater punishment do you think he will deserve who has rejected? So by doing that, uh, uh, consciously and uh, willfully sinning, it says you are, you, 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 are, you, are, you are receiving for yourself greater punishment. Or attracting to yourself greater punishment. Because you have rejected and trampled underfoot the Son of God. And has considered unclean and common, come on, the blood, the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, that sanctified him, which means you have he had already been sanctified and then he deviated again. Christ did not die for that, and has insulted the grace, uh, the spirit of grace, who impassed the unmerited favor and blessing of God. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine. Retribution and deliverance of, of justice rest with me. I will repair the wrongdoer, and again the Lord will judge his people. And then in verse 31, he says, It is a fearful and terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God, incurring his judgment and wrath. It is a fall. It's a fearful and terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We must be very careful in Jesus' name. Christ did not die for premeditated sins, intentional sins. What you, you call it apostasy, which means you have renounced your salvation. That is what it means. You've renounced your salvation. If you continue that daring, you either we are not saved in the first instance, or the gospel was not preached. You can't be a froster and remain a froster after salvation. It's not possible. You can't be a thief or gay and remain gay after salvation. It is not possible. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm preaching the Bible. That is mock repentance. That's what the Lord called it. He told me mock repentance. Mock. Christ did not die for mock repentance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Salvation brings tangible positive change. Otherwise, it's damnation. Let's go to the book of Acts. Acts 9, 26. I'll be, I'll be quick with that one. Acts 9, 26. You see, the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, this is when he was converted. Verse 26. He says, and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he assayed to join 
himself with the disciples. He tried to join himself with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. Why were they afraid of him? Because they knew his history. They knew his story. They had experienced him on, from the under, other side of his life. And believe not that he was a disciple. Now listen to verse 31, what it says. He says, then the church had rest. After they now believed that this guy truly had been saved, they have seen that this guy, there was chained through. And he says, the church had rest. The church could not have rest until Paul was chained. If there is no change, it's not the gospel. Throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and we are edified and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The simple message of the gospel is repentance. And repentance is simply positive change. It's a change, but it's, it has to be positive. If Christ died for premeditated sins, which means you plan to kill somebody and you go ahead and execute it, if Christ died for that, after you have received Christ and you still do it, there's no need for repentance. I say if he died for it, then there's no need for it. Let's just live our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of Hebrews 6. May God be glorified. Hebrews 6, 4, 4 to 6. It says, for it is impossible to restore to repentance. It is impossible to restore to repentance. If you use the word restore, which means you've been there and then you've fallen out. Those who have be, once been enlightened spiritually and who have tested the consciously and consciously experienced the, the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tested and consciously, repeatedly uses the word consciously, experience the good word of God. And the powers of the age or world to come. And then have fallen away. You have tested it and you have fallen away. It is impossible to bring them back again to repentance. Since they again nailed the Son of God on the cross. For as far as they are concerned, they are treating the death of Christ. As if they were not saved by it. And are holding him up again to public disgrace. He says you are disgracing the Lord. We are seeing it's intentional, you name him to the cross afresh. We are seeing it's intentional, you name him to the cross afresh. That's what he says, except you're a carpenter. He says, we are seeing it's intentional, you are nailing him to the cross afresh. That's what the scripture says. Yes, all have sinned. Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. True, all have sinned. Yes, it is not by works. Ephesians 2 9 tells us that. It is not by works, but the, the Bible says, and the Lord walked with them. Why would he walk with us if it's not by works? The Lord walked with them. Mark 16 20. May the Lord be glorified. We need to think. <laughs> and then the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. It's not by works. Why is faith without works? Faith is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross. Is faith you believe? Yes. He said, even the devils believe and tremble. But he says, faith without works is dead. Faith without works. James 2, 17 and 20. May the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is not of works. But why would you have to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling? Philippians 2, 12. May God be glorified. Go and meditate. It's not of works. Christ died and paid all for all sins. <laughs> that's that's the, the, the grace message. And God told me that grace is not, does not mean redundance. It doesn't make people redundant. It doesn't make you useless. It doesn't make you unprofitable. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, which is, which is the, the insinuation of uh, a lot of uh, 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 ministers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why do you have to stand in judgment? The Bible is it's not by works. It's not of works. He has done everything. Why would we need to give an account? He says we need to give an account. Romans 14, 12. Why do we need to give an account? May God be glorified. He says, should we continue in saying that grace may abound? He says, God forbid. Yes, you used to steal, but you steal no more. That's the gospel. Yes, you used to kill, but you kill no more. That's the gospel. Yes, you used to be involved in criminal activities, but you are now you're preaching the gospel of, of Christ. That's the gospel. That is the gospel that changes lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? But why? Because you met him. If you did not meet him, if you did not have, have an encounter with him, there can't be, be that change. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Or there may not be that change. May God be glorified. That's your gospel of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mark 7, 13. It says you have made the word of God of none effect. King James Version. It says you've made the word of God of none effect. You've made it, uh, 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 you've made it impotent by your traditions. By your traditions, which, which means your habits. Which means your habits. Because when it says, we, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? It means, should we habitually, should we turn it to a habit? We just get to do it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we need to be careful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I said we reduce, by so doing, we reduce the scriptures to a mere storybook. A mere storybook. And I said it on the previous show. There's a difference between theology and the Holy Spirit. They are totally different. They are not the same. May God be glorified. Yes, we all have the sin nature. Yes, it is true. We all have the sin nature. But sin nature and sin culture, they are totally different situations. They are totally different realities. Sin nature and sin culture. Sin nature means that once in a while, yes, you can... Uh, maybe something happens and you get upset for one second. Anger is considered a sin. Little, little things. That's uh, you have your sin nature coming out. But then sin culture, you, uh, you premeditate it. You know intentionally you are going to do this. And you do it. There is no, there is no saved, saved terrorist anywhere. No saved terrorist anywhere. No saved. You, can, maybe you are a terrorist before and you, you say, Oh, I received Jesus Christ and I got saved. And you still go and, and, and murder people somewhere. There is no saved terrorist anywhere. Grace. May God help us in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to James chapter 4. May God be glorified. James chapter 4. I'm, let me go to my King James. So I'm amplify this a bit. James chapter 4. 4 and 6. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world, the friendship of the world is enmity. The friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of of the world is the enemy of God. In verse 6 it says, but he giveth more grace, more grace, more grace, the ability to reject such thoughts, to continue in, 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 in uh, such lifestyle. is grace. That's the grace you need. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Now it says in verse 7, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why would you need to resist the devil? Why would you need to resist the devil? Christ died for everything. Christ died for everything. Why, why, should, we, why should we help him? Why should we help him? Why do we need to resist the devil? Why should we help God? Christ has died for everything. He has died for all our sins. There is no need. I said there's, that's why I said there's no safe terrorist anywhere. In, in, in 7 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18, it says, Be not... Unequally yoked, they call it a yoke, which means a bond. It might be a good bonding, it might be a bad bonding, depends on the, your, your communication. Your, listen, when you are truly saved, your friends will change, your contacts will change. It is not possible to, it is not possible to, to receive salvation and remain in the same circle. And even sometimes your relatives will change. Yes, sometimes your relatives will change. What did Jesus Christ say? They told him his mother was looking for him, his mother and his brethren. And he said to them, the ones that do the will of my father, they are my mother and my brethren. So sometimes your relatives will change. This is Jesus Christ. He said it in the Bible. May God be glorified. True salvation bets the fear of God. It bets the fear of God. You are married, and you are, you are uh, um, which is normal with uh, every man, I suppose. And you have a lot of ladies who are, who are willing to, to play with you. But then the fear of God keeps you away from that. That is salvation. You cannot just jump in because you premeditated it, you planned it, it's intentional. That's not what Christ died for. This is what the Bible says. I didn't say so. I didn't write the Bible, but I'm preaching the Bible. May the Lord be glorified. 
Once you think about it, and you, you've, you, you've, you've harbored those thoughts over a time, and then you execute it, Christ didn't die for that. Christ didn't die for that because most probably what will happen again is that you will fall into it again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fear of God controls your excess actions. Excess. I call it excess. Actions that you are not supposed to be involved in. Things you are not supposed to be doing. The fear of God will keep you from them. The fear will keep you from them. If there is no fear of God, you, you are not kept from them. May God be glorified. Let's go to Hebrews uh, Amplified now. Let's do Amplified. Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, let's see what it says. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, a cloud of witnesses, which means people that have testified of the faith before you, a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin. He called it the sin, the sin. There is the sin. There's a sin and there's the sin. It says, which so easily, cleverly entangles us. Cleverly. Nobody will find out. He said, let's do it. Nobody will find out. It entangles you. And it becomes a reproach. You are in that cycle until you are exposed and embarrassed. And, and some of them are watching me now. May God be glorified. It says, let us run with endurance and active persistence. The race that is set before us. Now it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. May the Lord be glorified. There is a, a sin that entangles you. If it entangles you, which means it seizes you. You are stuck in it and there's no way out. There, it seems like there's no way out. That means the blood was not shed for those. If, if it's, it's the sin that entangles you. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John, may God be glorified. 1 John 5, 16 to 18. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin that does not lead to death, he will pay, pray and ask on the believer's behalf, and God will, for him, give life to those whose sin is not leading to death. So there is a sin that leads to death. I didn't say it. The Bible says it, which means there are different categories of sin. There is a sin that leads to death, yes. I do not say that one should pray for this kind of sin. All wrongdoing is sin. All wrongdoing is sin. It makes it clear. And there is sin that does not lead to death. So all wrongdoing is sin, but there are different categories. Still, one can repent of it and be forgiven. So with the one that does not lead to death, you can repent of it. But the one that does not lead, uh, that leads to death, you can't repent from it. That's what it says. We know with co uh, confidence that anyone born of God does not habitually sin. But he, Jesus, who was born of God, carefully keeps and protects him. And the evil one does not touch him. So, once you are falling into that category, you know that the evil one has taught you. It says there is a sin that leads to death, which is a habitual sin. Is that, can you imagine living like animals? You are naked, you can sleep with anybody you like, or, uh, do anything you want. That is not what Christ died for. That's what he's telling you. It's, there, is a different kind, there are different kinds of sins, an unusual and abnormal kind of sin. That is the one he says that leads to death. Christ died for all sins. Why do we have to be careful with the things we do? Or the people... We go to bed with. Why? May God be glorified. Second Thessalonians 2.14. 2 Thessalonians 2.14. 2 Thessalonians 2.14. It says, It was to this end that he called you through our gospel, through our testimony, the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, so that you may obtain and share in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through us. Because of our testimony. He called you. He calls people through our testimony. God calls you for escape. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. 9 to 11. May God be glorified. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom or, uh, or have any share in the kingdom of God? And then in verse 11 it says. Uh, no, it, it continues anyway in verse 9. It says do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, idolaters, nor adulterers, the effeminate or perverse, uh, by profession, nor those who participate in homosexuality. And then he continues, in verse 11, he says, And such we are some of you, which means you, we are there. But when you receive salvation, you came over here. You can't go back there again. Christ died for all sins. <laughs> he says such we are. He didn't say such are some of you. 
Salvation will change your situation. Why? Because when you when you get converted, you become uncomfortable with the old lifestyle. You cannot be converted and continue therein. Now let's go to Second Corinthians quickly. No, the time is fine. Second Corinthians four <coughs> seven. <coughs> It's a lot. It talks about our gospel again. It says, but even if our gospel is in some way hidden, but then, let me just summarize it. It says, we do not preach ourselves. We preach Christ. Of course, Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified, but it is Christ through us. The testimony. How do we know he was crucified? If he cannot change our lives. If his spirit cannot help us through the storms. We don't preach us. We preach Christ through us. What is your salvation story? Are you still a Christian kidnapper or a believer kidnapper? Or are you still a, like I called it before, Christian terrorist? <laughs> if there was no change from the past, you were not saved. Simple. That's why it says, do not be conformed with evil desires. May God help us in Jesus' name. So let's quickly say a prayer of salvation. Lord, save me and help me by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you can check us on YouTube, Chimezie Okonkwo, on Facebook, Come Global Church, and instead of that, go, increase, multiply, and expand in numbers in Jesus' name. And I pray that God will give you the strength to, to assimilate this message, to receive this message as the word of God, because it came from the word of God. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And I say, Shalom, in Jesus' name. Amen.